of the most iconic voices in golf are back to save the day and ready to entertain in their newly weekly video podcast, Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers. Yes, you found us. You're here. If you're a golf fan, this is the place to be. Costas and McCord, Off Their Rockers. Mike Abram, along with Peter Costas, Gary McCord, we're back with another episode. And fellas, we got so much positive response from the new Believe It or Not segment. We're going to continue this because we've got some more topics to hit. want to thank you for your subscribing, your commenting, and don't forget to hit that notification button right below to make sure you don't miss an episode of our show. Guys, one thing that you, we've talked about and I want to throw out as a Believe It or Not, this is a big one. Is the PGA Tour going to try to buy the PGA of America? That's the latest rumor, you know, that that's coming out. So, so yeah, and again, let's let's we're not kind of grabbing these out of the air. Peter and I were sitting on the putting green <laughs> of our golf course, which we have 37 tour pros. Yeah, and that, a lot of them on the board. Just so happened to be one of them who <laughs> right. who, who will Go remain nameless. Na- nameless. Yes. Yes. Um, said, how about this one, guys? Uh, it, our putting green is a great source of all of these rumors, believe it or not. And his thing was, hey, guys, listen to this one. We're hearing now that the PGA of America, some 38,000 okay. members, um, are going to sell to the PGA Tour. The reason would be, obviously, they control the Ryder Cup. And, um, and they control the PGA of America or the PGA Tournament. Um, a major, so do we acquire that? Is that feasible? Does that sound... Okay, on the yes, it will happen side, forever, the PGA Tour has been royally pissed off that the five biggest events in golf, the four majors and the Ryder Cup, they have nothing Nothing. involved financially with that, Mm -hmm. right? So on the Believe It side, yeah, if they could do that, work out a deal, they get a major and they get the Ryder Cup. Mm-hmm. Or half of the Ryder yep. Cup, however you want to say it. So that's that's good. The on the don't believe it side, will there be enough money in this acquisition that will trickle down to the golf professionals and to the assistant <laughs> golf professionals? PAP. That they <laughs> that, <laughs> that <laughs> whatever they, that is. Wow. Yeah. Well, that, I don't have that. that they that they would want to sign off on this. You know, d- does does the PGA of America hierarchy have the right to do that. I don't know, but it would be hilarious to me. 19, was it 68? 1968. Yeah. yeah. The PGA what? tour was under the PGA of America. Mm-hmm. Jack and Arnie didn't yeah. like it. The players were pissed off. They weren't getting paid enough. Yeah, right. So World tour. bingo, yeah. they go off and they go to, to, they form what is now known as the PGA tour. And now the PGA tour comes back 50 years later and acquires the PGA of America. I don't know. How about we'll throw a kicker on that. And part of the trade, a player to be named later is Seth Waugh, the CEO and president of the PGA of America, goes and becomes the commissioner of the PGA Tour. Wow. (laughs) Believe it or not. Yeah, okay, we're just throwing things on there, but (laughs) I just threw that on the plate. I mean, believe it or not. Um, How would that change the landscape of golf as we know it as far as day-to-day the pga of america guys kind of go off and do their business it does it does does zero it does zero to rectify the conflict in in professional golf as we see it today yeah does nothing nothing speaking of the conflict in professional golf today we've all been watching full swing the second season uh believe it or not full swing is making the contention greater but also letting us get a little bit of a connection with some of these players that we didn't know before. What do you think, Gary? I think it's one of the great marketing tools we've got on the tour. I mean, we're taking people and we're diving into those people, people that are making decisions, they are part of the process, and we're defining those. And, And that's how you build interest. You don't throw a Jake Knapp out there and watch him win and then watch him coming forth and Rory going, this guy could really play and not identify him and yeah. get in there. And, not know his story. Why were you a bouncer? Who'd you beat up? And all of a sudden you're hitting a 340 uh, and you're beating these guys. Well, that's a great story. You're from Costa Mesa. Are you kidding? You got to be a surfer, right? He's working out. 
build it up, build it up, and identify these people. They have more interest. They want to watch. And I think that's what Netflix does, and I think that's why it's great. Okay, so I'll play the devil's advocate of course in, you in this deal. Point this, is like, this is like 11 people watching this Jane, you ignorant full swing, swing series <laughs> so far. So those 11 people are going to get excited because they're going to learn about some players. Mm-hmm. Fine. Um, I agree with you. A little salty the, there, Pete. Well, I mean... Peter Salty? No. no a little bit. The, the, no. You, there's no viewership to speak of okay. for this at this point. doesn't say it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. But when, when you look at the players on the PGA Tour right now, who, who's, your, who's your go-to guy? Rory. Apart from Rory, who, Rory, who's your go-to guy? At number two would be Scotty Scheffler. Oh, my God, when are you going to make a putt, Scotty? Jordan um, Speed, the Jordan wild Speed, adventure every they, round. They still haven't. Jordan hasn't won in a while. Rory hasn't won a major in ten years. So again, we've got depleting assets. Right, and, and we have to promote some new younger players. Yes. I think this can do it eventually yes. if yes. they do it correctly. Um, but the, the fact remains that the the Netflix show, um, to me, it, other than a few snippets here and there, mm-hmm. like seeing Rory getting undermined. <laughs> with with all of a sudden, I texted you when I watched that. all the the merger and whatnot. That was that was intriguing to me. Yeah. But but it's it's a lot of dead dead air. You know, I, I'm not all that interested in in, air. in in Joel Damon's struggles after becoming I am, famous. Because I, I like that, that I'm I mean, sitting there and I'm in Joel Damon and I know exactly my whole career was that. <laughs> and I'm going, that's exactly right. You don't know where to go, which direction to go. You're having trouble at home. You can't afford this. You can't, it, and my ball won't go where I'm aiming. What am I going to do now? I quit. I'm going to become a lawyer. I cannot tell you how many times I sat in baggage claim and waited for my damn baggage coming around going, what am I doing? Quit. Quit right now. Quit right now and start doing something because in five years, if you don't, you'll be doing the same damn thing, waiting for your baggage to go qualify on Monday. Okay, so. Let's, there we go. Let's, I, no, I, I feel I, so much better. Thank you. I, I understand. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Now, you. now this, this, this kind of morphs into uh, another subject, which is, which is uh, the TV networks and their golf coverage. Sure. Now. Yeah. Back in the day, and mm-hmm. I said, okay, these are the old guys retired, blah, blah, blah. We used to be able to tell stories mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. players. Mm-hmm. We used to be able to, to have time to paint the Joel Damon story on CBS. Mm-hmm. Ah, nothing. Okay. All they are is stats and quick shots. Well, and, tell, them, and this... tell them why. Tell them why, because when your producer, and this started about 10, 12 years ago, we were in Colonial, a graphic comes yeah. called Lower Third. Yeah. Read the graphic. Okay, there's a graphic there, and it's not like you at home, I know you can all read, just read it while I'm talking about this. No. We as announcers have to read it. Yeah. The reason? Yeah. The graphic is being paid for. It's a yeah. revenue stream. It's revenue. So therefore, you've got to read everything. And the more they put on, the more revenue they get. So I remember the three of you, me, and Faraday were sitting there going, boys, our job is gone okay. basically now. <laughs> All we are is graphic readers. So, really. So given, given that, that network television is broken right now due to financial costs, <laughs> and, and and whatnot, yeah. the, 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 the rights that they have to pay the tour, you got to make that money back. So, given the fact that that's not going to happen, we're we not going to be able to tell stories. Mm-hmm. We're not going to be able to to uh, actually tell the story about why Scotty Scheffler's putting poorly mm-hmm. or whatever you, yeah. you choose. And they just look, well, he was plus this strokes gain, minus this strokes gain. Who the hell gives a shit? Who cares about strokes games? Yeah, what's the reason? It's, it's a number. It tells you what. It doesn't tell you why. There's no why mm-hmm. on TV anymore. That's if that remains as is, then Netflix and Full Swing serves a purpose, mm-hmm. and then we can we can kind of get the two blended together, and you can start to tell the why mm-hmm. behind the performance. Mm-hmm. There's no why on TV anymore. Mm-hmm. It's just what what what, right? Exactly. When I was hearing Joel Damon's story. I first thing I thought of Gary's told me the same story that kind of similar story that he's gone through. I mean, there's there is a connection that you feel this is a human being. He's got all this stuff with him, and I know you're. This, no, I mean, I, you know, may, maybe the reason that I wasn't intrigued by it is because I've heard it so many times. <laughs> that could and be. here and, and here is another thing that that is not gone without 
eyes on it and ears yeah. listening to it is the cry from all those players now that can't get in any tournaments. We have really got now, like the old days, yeah. the halves, I'll call them the birdies and the bogeys. And these guys now, are, the, the kid that uh, was leading uh, Arnold Palmer tournament, first thing he did was cry about the fact he got in the top five to get in this tournament. Barely. Otherwise, he's not going to be able to yeah. play. And he says that the gap between the guys that can play in the elevated events and the guys that can't, the guys that can't, can't possibly get in there yeah. unless they play so good it's impossible. Mm -hmm. So you have really now put a line in the sand and gone, okay, you guys can make it and you guys, good luck. And that's the way the tour, and the tour is going to get very vocal now with the bogeys, those guys that are trying every week yep. to get in. They can't even get in tournaments. Trust um, me, they are going to unionize. Oh yeah, in some are. fashion Just or form, they're 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 going to unionize and they're and they're gonna they're gonna en masse or require some change. They can go right to the DP tour <laughs> if if Liv Boom. buys it. I mean, I'd right, yeah. right now I'd run over there and <laughs> play in that thing. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's crazy. How and let, much let's let's stuff. let's yeah. talk a little bit about the television end of it, okay? okay. And, and this is a, a big deal because. This contract, media rights contract, was signed in, in 2000. It took effect in 2022. It goes to 2030. And I believe the number is 5.1 million. The tour gets 736 million a year up to 2030. This contract's going to be renegotiated probably, I'm guessing, starting in 2028, right early. in there. I think right I there. they'd love to do it. I, I think the networks are going to want to do it earlier, and they're going to, they, they could even file a lawsuit. Because the product that they signed up for isn't the product that they're given now. Let's let's just take NBC. That's another rumor. What's going on in NBC? Okay. No, they're going to go. <laughs> this is going to be a, a complete disaster. They're going to go to remote announcers. The PGA Tour is building this huge facility in Ponte Vedra, just to the right of the mm -hmm. 17th hole, someplace mm -hmm. over there. Tell them what that's all about. That's that's a TV. Network. Yes. Big network comp. Yes. Right? And, and so then they're going to control the production. Which we tried to do initially. Steve Reed did it back in, I read the report, 1981, PGA Tour Productions. going to do all television. What happened was, I think the government came in. It was antitrust. No, you got to shop it out. You can't do it yourself. And we basically couldn't afford it because we had to buy everything at that point. So go ahead. So, I mean, they're going <clears> to... <throat> Television is going to be remote. They're going to save money. Mm -hmm. They're going to have the announcers. We've been saying this for hundred years. Yeah. Right? But it's now it's coming to reality. Yeah. I mean, we're living long enough to yeah. see it. That's well, yeah. And the pandemic and it, kind of proved you can do let's it. Let's just explain what what happened. Okay. The three of us. Yeah. We're here at Arnold Palmer's tournament, Orlando, Florida. Welcome to us. And and this is be the second round. Now in the background, we're going to have a green screen, and it's going to be the 18th hole where the announce tower is. You will not have a clue that we're not there because no. all we need is one guy on the ground. One guy to tell me which way the wind blows and how the lie is. Yeah. What's it look like, Peter Costas, down there? And that's it. You would have no clue that we're in Scottsdale or we're in Dallas and or except, whatever. Ex except did you just see the basketball game they had on a couple days ago? And the, and the announcers were remote. They, they were back in a the studio. They, sure. they weren't at the basketball game, right? Yeah. Okay. And the, the TV production crew, their clock on the game somehow was off by six seconds <laughs> and it came down it came down to a half court shot that a player made to win the game by one point and and all of a sudden everything goes hey, nuts yeah. but then it's, oh wait a second they go back and they realize the clock was off and it's now we're going to overtime okay. all right. All right. you know all right. so it's Stuff's going to happen. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's, gonna, yeah. there's no two there's ways no around question. it. It's not but, perfect. But, the thing but, is, but, but NBC is going so cheap right now. Yeah. They, 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 get, they got an 18th hole announcer of the week. They're aud auditioning. Right? Yeah, it's, it's like the boys. They only care about the Players' Championship. They only care about the U.S. Open mm -hmm. right now. And the Players' Championship, thank God, no longer will it, we, we have to hear that it's a fifth major yeah. anymore yeah. or the best field in golf because right? yeah. it's not. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So they're, the, NBC is looking to dump. Well, and NBC, the golf channel and NBC, in, in all due respect, the PGA Tour, when they signed this contract, there was no such thing as an elevated event. No. Well, all of a sudden now they got eight, 
And by the way, they give six to CBS and two to NBC. Ouch. And if you've got only two, that means you're going to get sandwiched between elevated events and no one's going to show up at your events. And that's what you're and seeing right now. And half the field is over on the other side in Saudi Arabia playing, and that you didn't sign up for that either. So I, I think we've seen them go like this. All right, we're out. We're out. We're, we're, we're going to throw different guys we're in every out. week in the booth. And yes. Everything. Speaking of televised events, speaking of PGA Tour Live and DP World Tour even, you guys have had a chance, we've all had a chance to use uh, a new putter that's been out, well it's been out for a while, the technology, <clears throat> but it it's really gaining a foothold out on all the tours. The latest who's adopted it is Phil Mickelson out on Live and he had one of his best tournaments finishing a tie for sixth. His putting was better than it's been, but a lot of guys on the PGA Tour, Lucas Glover, resurrected his career. Tell us a little bit about the Lab Golf putters. Um, you guys have them in your bag. I have it in my bag. It's it's different, isn't it? Yeah, it it, it really is. I'm Peter and I. Um, I got a um, I got a I got a email or something from this guy. He said I want to talk to you and Peter. And this was I'm guessing seven years ago. Oh, way more than that. Was it really? Way, way more okay, than that. Okay, let's say way, ten Bill, years Bill ago. Bill Pressey was Bill Pressey on yeah. the putting green at right. Riviera. Right. And yeah. we're looking. He, he brings out this thing that's this big. It's, it looks like you would aim it somewhere in the sky to be the. It's it's. It I can't like tell people what we called it. Telescope. Yeah. <laughs> and we looked at it, and directed all of a sudden, force. yeah, directed force putter at that time, and. You know, the first thing we got the grip, and the grip was here, and then he showed us the revealer where the thing, when you moved it, it didn't touch the putter. Okay. It, yeah, it, yeah, you can see some stayed, video of that here right it now. It stayed 90 degrees on its arc, just, wherever the arc was. Just to explain it to people, lab putter, L dot A dot B dot, is lie angle balance. Yes. So it's all about the angle of your putter shaft, and then... When you swing that shaft on, on its plane, the weighting in the head is very sophisticated and the face stays square to that arc yes. at all times, as long as you don't shove it out to Move the right it. or whatever, which is also another reason why all these guys with the claw grip and, mm -hmm. and what they're doing and the, and the long putter, mm -hmm. they're, they're letting the head swing. Mm -hmm. And if you can let the head swing with this putter, it's going to square itself up pretty much you know you know <laughs> i was doing it the other day which was really interesting if you want to really prove it to yourself yeah you take the lab putter and hold you it put as little pressure as you can on it Just and you hold it like this and you take it up here and you line it up and you drop it and when you drop it the thing the face doesn't move it just goes straight if you could do that you'd never choke you no. just you just pull it back and let it go. You're not touching anything. It'd go like a pendulum. Yeah, the only, the only way forth. you could screw it up is if this flinched. Yeah, which moved, I, which... I would figure that I'd go like this or something. But anyway, um, it is technology-wise, when we talked about it years ago, it was significantly the most technology I've seen in a new putter. Most of them are just copies. Yeah, it's they put different totally different than face balance. Yeah, my angle balance compared no to face There's no such balance. thing as face yeah. balance putter. No, it, it's it's, the, it's the continuation of putters from the 8802 heel shafted toe opens and closes, the, the bullseye putter. Mm -hmm. Those were, and, and then came the ping answer, mm -hmm. right? And so that was the next generation of technology, heel toe weighted, and now we've gone to uh, moment of inertia MOI putters that are bigger, more mallet style with weights further back, and and you know it, it stabilizes the it stabilizes the putter head a little bit more. And now with these lab putters, what you're seeing is the continuation of the technology to another level. Right. Yeah. What the hell are you doing? Okay, there's a putter that came out a long time ago, invented, and these these were. Here's the face of the putter, shaft goes here. And he had big, huge catamarans coming out yeah, of the back of it. Yeah, yeah. That was invented by a guy named Dr. Joe Corvey, oh. who was the guy that put the first guys on the moon. He's a physicist. Oh, and he was a member of this club that I was hanging around. And he showed me the putter, and they outlawed it because... These it was too were long. longer. Yes, that's how they out, that, yes. that's how they outlawed it. Yes, they they, they yes. realized it was good. It was so yeah. Then they passed a rule that says yeah. the putter can't be deeper than it yeah. is wide. I remember I, I was on the putting green with him and I go. He goes, I want to show you this, and I go, What are those for? 
That's the last thing I remember. He went off on physics, and I was, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? What do you mean it stabilizes MLI? He I've never heard of this stuff. He was speaking your love language. No, this was 100 years ago. I did, it was just amazing how smart the guy was. Oh. And, uh, and I go, here, what a thing I go. Well, so you've put the guys in, yeah, he says, here, I'm going to shoot a rocket right now. And we're going at 1,008 miles an hour around the equator, and I got to shoot this rocket, and I got to hit the moon going around us like this. And I go, Yeah, you're right. I said, Okay, <laughs> that's got some physics in it. Well, go to, ahead. to go find ahead. out more about lab putters, go to labgolf.com, L A B golf.com. They really are different, they're unique technology, and they're on every tour and worldwide. And I'm using one. Yeah, and they, they are something else. Hey, we're going to take a quick break, we're going to get some Coach Costa some more tips to help your game. And later, Peter and Gary pull back the curtain and share some never before heard stories about network golf television. Don't go away, Costas and McCord off their rockers, we'll be right back. Imagine a putter that will actually transform your game. Introducing Lab Golf Putters. The revealer shows how the lab keeps the putter face square through impact unlike any other putter. Lab is the hottest putter in professional golf with multiple global victories in 2023, including the PGA Tour. Lab breaks the mold with better science so you can stop struggling with your putting. Elevate your game, simplify your putting, and untorque yourself. Visit labgolf.com to discover how lab putters are remaking the game. Bono's Pit Barbecue, an authentic Southern Pit Barbecue experience you won't forget. At Bono's, you'll find a genuine down-home pit barbecue experience, the whole experience. Our entire menu is smoked and prepared in-house from our mouth-watering smoked meats to our delicious sides made from scratch. Our smoker is always smoking and everything to order, no shortcuts. With 20 locations across the country, from the sunshine state of Florida to the Rocky Mountains, Bono's culture is unmistakable at each of our restaurants. We offer incredible opportunities for franchisees. To find out more, visit our website, bonosbarbecue.com slash franchise. And remember, if you don't have a pit, it ain't legit. Visit our website, costasmccord.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel or podcast and follow us on social media at Costas McCord off their rockers. Now it's time for Coach Costas. Peter gives us some great tips to help our games. A problem I see with a lot of golfers, they have no concept of how to get their arms down in front of their body and release the arms and the rotation of the body correctly through impact. With all this emphasis these days on clearing the hips, ground force reaction, using the big muscles, I see a whole bunch of people who get the lower body way out in front way too soon. Club stuck back here and now they gotta fight to get it back in front of them. Well, I like a drill called the backwards drill. It really makes it easier for you to understand the transition with the hands and arms and the coordination of the rotation of the body. It also helps you chronic slicers out there. So I'm gonna tee it up with a seven iron. I'm gonna set up as I normally would. Now from that normal setup, I'm gonna try and leave my upper body alone and I'm gonna turn my lower body to the right. This is why they call it the backwards drill. My lower body's backwards. So I've pre-turned my hips I got all the room in the world to take the club up. And then more importantly, as I start the club down, I've kind of locked my left hip in position. I can't spin it out very easily. So what will happen is you go up, come down, and you'll release the club head past your hands. So then you'll get the sensation of what it's like to feel the club head passing your hands through the impact area. Once you get that sensation, you can go ahead and gradually go from backwards to 45 degrees to maybe right foot back a little bit and eventually to your normal setup. But you'll get the sensation from the backwards drill of what it's like to get a little bit of the drop before you start to rotate the body, get the clubs back in, uh, the club and hands back in front of you and then the rotation is going to occur through impact, 
not prior to impact. Backwards drill for all you slicers out there. Peter did a little poll on X, formerly known as Twitter. Wanted to know what you wanted to hear from he and Gary. And the number one answer was, we want to hear about your days in network television on CBS and what it was like. There are so many great stories. There's so much going on behind the curtain. And today we're going to bring a little light to what happens in network television right here on Casas and McCord off their rockers. So let's get to Peter and Gary right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Scottsdale Chamber of Commerce does not want you to see this. It is a little chilly in the morning, but it'll be great this afternoon. Gary, I, I just, just hang on. If your teeth start chattering, we'll, we'll, we'll cut, all right? So I ran a poll on Twitter, on X, and the poll was, uh, let's have a poll for what you want Gary and I to discuss next, what subject? And I gave you these options. It was ball rollback. It was the, the Live PGA Tour merger. It was modern teaching methods, and then it was TV golf coverage. Well, TV golf coverage got almost 50% of the vote, way ahead of, of uh, the live merger, then the ball rollback, and modern teaching methods, well, <laughs> you can tell how, how they're going because that was last in the voting. So Gary, we're gonna talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then let's talk about CBS. So we're gonna talk about TV golf coverage. Now, I don't really know what I meant by TV golf coverage in the sense that um, it's, there's the evolution of TV golf coverage that you and I have seen yep. through the years. There's, there's current TV coverage that we have with, with the networks and Golf Channel and, and Live Golf and whatever. Um, and then there's TV coverage moving forward. You know, what's it gonna look like in, in the future? So we got a whole bunch of options here. I'll start off. The reality is, in, in the world of professional golf, when you take the number of tournaments that they have, on, let's just take the PGA Tour, and you add up all the people who went to that event for the week. Who went? The, 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 the fans. The oh, fans. the fans, okay. And you add up all the fans who went to all the events on the PGA Tour for a year, okay. whatever that number is, okay. it pales in comparison to the number of people who have watched the event on television. Yeah. Fact or fiction? Fact. Okay. So therefore, people's perception of what professional golf or professional golf tournaments are like isn't really based on the reality of having gone there. For the most part, it's based on what they see on TV and how it's presented to them on television. Like all television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Hence, hence the, the, the live product sucks. Live product is no good. I don't like it. Whatever. The reality is very few people have ever gone to an event. Very few. And, and those who have seemingly enjoy it. So what these people are saying is either a pre preconceived idea that it's going to be bad because they want it to be bad or live golf coverage sucks or a combination. Right? So let, let's go with the premise that if people don't like golf on TV, it's because of how it's being covered. Who's covering it, who's doing it, and how they're doing it. So go, give me, give me your riff on, on TV golf coverage, how it's being done, and, and the fact that people really don't like it. Well, I think right now the number one thing is commercials. Okay. I think that the thing that really depresses a lot of people is the amount of commercials that are in an hour. And I think when we were doing it at CBS, I think it was like 18 minutes per hour <coughs> for commercial breaks. Now, you load, it's called load management, and what the producer tries to do is load all those early in the telecast so at the last hour there's a minimum of, um, of, of blatant uh, commercialization when a guy's trying to make a four footer for, for the win. So I think if, if in essence that, that is the one thing I think that would be predominant in, in their reason. And the other stuff is just your perception of how a televised event should be done. If they like the person talking, is the person talking too much, all of the little things. But I think, I think the intrusion of, of Commercials is the biggest thing. I, I would agree wholeheartedly. When, when we started at CBS, <clears throat> there was a point there. I remember Frank Trichini and our producer telling me at a dinner that we went to that CBS Golf, 
at the time was a little over 20% of the net profits of the entire CBS network. Think of that. That's how, that's how much that. money they made yeah. doing golf. That's why we were autonomous at that point. We could do, yeah, we could do it anything that. we wanted, <laughs> like $10,000 dinners every night. Whatever. It didn't make any difference, no. right? So now, again, it comes back to, yeah, it's commercials, but it comes back to money. Tiger comes along, purses go up. Ad sales go up. Ad rights fees go up. Yep. Now you got to charge more for ads. Now when you can't charge anymore, you got to have more of them and so on and so forth. So the dilemma of, of too many commercials is stuck in the rights fees that the networks have to pay. And they got to figure out a way to, to make some kind of a profit or at least minimize their, their losses, right. Right? right? So we're stuck right now until there's a different form of golf on TV. And, 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 and the golf on TV too, Peter, draws nobody to watch. It really doesn't. But it doesn't, like, but, it, but it's more people than actually go to the event. Oh, yeah. There's a lot more. I mean, okay, a rating point, if I remember right, one rating point is 975. Just under a million. People, yeah. So we're getting, at CBS, I remember we were getting, what were we getting on Saturday? A 1.5 to 2, and then Sunday we'd go 2 to 2.67, 2.67. So you can do the math. We're talking, at the best, we're getting 3 million people to watch on a Sunday, and that's usually with Tiger playing, we would get those higher ratings. So if you look at it in the big picture, I think last year, 2023, if I remember this number they had, help me with this, they looked at the ratings. The top rated telecast was Sunday of the Masters, which usually is. And that got a rating, the highest rating of any golf telecast, and that ranked in all sports ratings 131st. <laughs> The which, Masters, which, the last round Sunday, and it ranked 131st. So you can see right now, the to get the ad dollars and to sell these media packages, it's got to be tough for the tour when the eyeballs are, are not there. But as we have learned over the years, it's not the eyeballs that is watching, it's the quality of those eyeballs that are watching. And we, we sell to the IBMs, we sell to the Cadillacs, we sell to, to the telecommunications companies. And the whole, remember the whole formula was always, well, it's not, it's not how many it's watched, it's the quality watch. So we don't, our numbers really don't dictate that. That was all, that was always the veil of secrecy, was the fact that we've got the right eyeballs watching, whatever that meant. That was really the beginning of, of specialized advertising in, in the sense now you go on your computer and for whatever reason you, you clicked on some site and now you're getting ads for shoes with you know yeah. holes yeah. in them or whatever yeah. and and now all the sponsors used to be sold the good the bill of goods that the people who are watching this telecast have the disposable income to buy your product and right? the graphics are everything and so so that that was that lasted for a while but now now we move on and and the state of the golf world on television to me right now is is not very good. The product, we understand the commercials, mm -hmm. right? It's not going to go away for a while, so we've got to live with that. So what do we do to make it better? Well, unfortunately, to make it better, you have to spend money, which means you're going to lose money, which means they're not going to do it. But here's what I would do. You've got to have Shot Tracer on every single shot. We'll do it. You've got to mic the caddies. That cost a lot, but I think uh, if the health of if I remember right, one shot tracer camera cost forty thousand dollars. Back weekend. in the day, yeah, but it's it's but it's, it's, it's a little bit less expensive now. Yes. But, yeah. it, but it's a lot. When we first started doing it, that's why you can only have one shot tracer out there. Then you got you got um, Mike in the caddies. I hate these interviews. I hate these walk and talks. I hate this putting the earbuds in the ears. It's stupid. You know, you're gonna talk to to Aaron Rodgers in the huddle while he's getting ready to, to name a play in the middle of a football game? I don't think so. Why would you talk to a player? You get, by the way, you get nothing out of it anyhow. They're not going to say anything of any consequence. But uh -oh. you might got something between the player and the caddy that you can play after the fact and say this is why he did what he did, right? The, I'll give you an insight. I remember the first time we got to interview players on the golf course, okay? <laughs> And it was done, it was done with, with uh, cable. They started yep. doing it first. 
And then I remember we were doing the tournament. It's like, it's like, I don't want to find want to eat this. G give it to Mikey. Yeah, yeah, give no, it Mikey. to Mikey. Mikey, Mikey like Cable TV was yeah. Mikey. They'd and try everything out on cable TV. They they and, and, and if he didn't throw up, then they, they may try it on network TV. They did. And, <laughs> and the rules were on the PGA Tour at that time. And I'm talking, when I started working, it was 86. So the rules were you couldn't talk to the players. Right. But there was a way around that. And I remember Frank Chirkanian, I went and talked to Frank Chirkanian about it, who's our producer, director, uh, that discovered this whole thing on television. And I said, okay, if we can't talk to him, what if they just start talking to us? And he looked at me and goes, what do you mean? I got, I got an idea. So I'll never forget, we're yeah. on, Mark Kalkovecki <laughs> is winning Doral, okay? Uh -huh. And he's playing the last group, and it's part three. And my idea was, all I'm gonna do is stand up to the side, and when they start walking down the golfer's aid, you know, the mode part that yeah. goes in the deal, I'm just gonna start walking next to them. And all, all I was gonna do is just flip the mic on and not say a word and see if they'd say anything to me. And it started, <laughs> and Mark started talking to me. Da 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 da. Then I go, well, what, what do you think so far? What do you gotta do, do you think, to, to hold on to this? You're not playing that good. He goes, yeah, I know. I said, I'm faking it right now. So we just start talking. And on the tour came back and they go, you can't do that. And Frank goes, he didn't do anything. He was just there. They started talking to him. So the whole deal was yeah. at first, that's how bad it was that they had to talk to me and I was just getting their way with the mic open and we'd walk and they'd talk. Yeah, but that, that shows you how out of touch the tour was with providing a product for the viewer. They, they don't, I, I said this on a no laying up podcast after you and I were gracefully let go by CB, CBS. And, and I said, unceremoniously. Look, well, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they asked me my opinion of, of uh, golf on TV, and, and I said, I haven't met a person yet in management, no, this is management level, of the PGA Tour, of the networks, of the Golf Channel, whatever, who gives a rat's ass about the viewer experience. Because they don't. All they care about, they're, they're bean counters, they care about tallying up the, the, the tally sheet at the end of the week, oh, we made $1,000, oh, we lost $10,000, whatever the, the case may be. But all they cared about was the bottom line, right? And so th this is ultimately the reason why we're stuck with TV coverage the way it is. Now, if you're going to cut costs to try and make it profitable and, and enhance the telecast, what would you do? What's the first thing you would do? If you had to. Had to cut costs, what's the first thing you would do? Um, cut cost a bunch. Okay, everybody's got an iPhone, right? And they all take movies. I would, I would pay the players to do their own interviews on the golf course while they're playing. Real simple. Get out your phone, start talking into it. And you're going to talk to the guy, and it's a, it's a pay scale system that the higher, higher you are in the tournament, the more money you'd get. These guys would do this in two seconds. Peter, what do you think of that shot I just hit on 17? I got a part of the last hole to win. What do you think? Yeah, I, 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 okay. That's the cheapest way to do it. We've all got iPhones, you know, or some kind of phone that takes movies. Let's do that. For me, the cheapest way to do it is to get rid of the announcers. There's well, too many of them. There's, 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 there's just too many. I'm sorry. But you, you, got, you got two or three people on the ground. You got another two people in towers. You got two more people in the 18th tower. And you got one golf ball being shown. Mm -hmm. One shot. And the guy on the ground or the girl on the ground wants to get her words in or his words in. The a tower announcer wants to get his words in. Then the analyst wants to get his words in. And then if it's one of the holes that's assigned to the 18th tower, your your play-by-play -play person wants. You got four people talking over one shot. How much can you say about one shot? And then let, let's just give them a little idea of what that whole thing is. Uh, when we started, we started doing this. Um, certain things would come into the process of doing a golf telecast. And I remember the, when you were there, uh, we, were, we were having a meeting with CBS and they were talking about they're gonna get this new graphics deal going on television, <laughs> where they're gonna put these graphics. <laughs> now the graphics are nothing more than shot link on every hole, uh, has, and it takes the player's distance from the pin, takes everything, and it puts it into a database. Well that, Shot link is controlled by the PGA Tour, which they're selling that information on the internet. So basically, it's a revenue stream for the tour, right? Yeah. 
And I remember we were sitting there one day, okay, and it was back up, back up. Colonial. We're, we're at Colonial. Yeah. You're on the 16th hole, yeah. and they, and during commercial break, they show this graphic of of what they're going to do, and and they have they have red, white, and blue uh, golf balls to show distance between birdies, pars, and yeah. bogeys or worse. Yeah, and, and so and so Trigini goes, McCord, you're going to do this. This is and this is and, the first one, and, and I think. It's the very first one, and, and you said that we're in commercial break, and you said, Frank, they're going to try and take our jobs away. I'm not doing it. I, I, re I refuse. Frank goes, McCord, you will do this. Explain what the balls mean. And so Gary, in his own inimitable fashion, he acquiesces to Frank, and he goes, they, they put up this graphic, introduce it, now we're on the air, and Gary goes, whoa, whoa. What's this? This looks like some kind of a Rorschach test or, or whatever. He goes, oh, let me, you folks at home, I'm going to figure this out for you so you don't have to cramp your brains. I, I got it. The white balls. That's where players hit it off the tee and made par. That's okay. Playing defensive. Playing defensive, it's yeah. okay. The red balls. Ah. The red balls, that's where the players hit it off the tee. Very and, aggressive. And, and they were aggressive and they Very were aggressive. rewarded. They made birdies. Yes. And, and the blue balls. And the blue balls. You don't want those. Those really hurt. <laughs> That was it. Let's go to commercial. <laughs> Holy shit, did I catch it this year? Blue balls, those really hurt. You idiot, what are you doing? I said, well, they are, their doubles are worse. I mean, that was it. That was, got that, laughing so hard. That was, that was McCord's way of trying, that trying to put the kibosh yeah. on, on all this technology that's infiltrated the work. golf telecast. And as you can see, it didn't work. No, it didn't work. Didn't so. work. Um, yeah, the, the, I think there's too many announcers. One of the great moments in sports, <laughs> by the way. Those blue balls will kill you. We, we got one more story we can tell. What? And it's the 15th hole at Colonial. Ah, that, Bobby you, Clampett. <laughs> Let's all get back in the trucks. <laughs> Why Bobby's going to so, get interviewed so we by got, Frank. After so this. Bobby Clampett, God bless him. Go ahead, you take this. He, he's a sweetheart. He's, he's, uh, he's in the 15th tower. and uh, Very naive. Individual. <coughs> Bobby Bobby has led a, a sheltered life, shall we say? Pebble Beach, born and raised. <laughs> yeah. Pebble Beach. And so, I tell you a lot. Robert so, Louis Stevenson School. The, Pebble the, Beach. Go ahead. We're at Colonial, and and the golf course is baked out. It's firm. Fifteenth green is like, is like they laid bricks down there and didn't have any grass. And there's the the river, the creek that comes behind it, and balls are hitting on the green. And, and either going in the back bunker, rolling over on the back fringe, or going in the water. And nobody has, has been able to get the ball close to this middle left pin placement. I don't remember who the player was, but Bobby, Bobby's doing the play-by-play, -play and he goes, all right, here he is, 115 yards. This green is so firm, nobody's been able to get it close. And so the player hits it, takes one hop, spins back to about six feet or thereabouts, to which Bobby Clampett on air says, whoa, can you believe the jism he put on that shot? Silence. <laughs> we're just, and we're then, waiting now for our <laughs> producer director to scream into this ear on the all air key, which he has a key that he opens up to all the announcers and he screams at us. So, so we're all waiting for the response. And so it's commercial. We go to commercial. Two, maybe two and a half seconds you after we commercial. Hair. Clamp it, you curly haired blah 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 blah, 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 blah. in my blah, office. Blah. Do you know what you just said? Yeah, Frank, I, he put a lot of spin on it. Clamp it, do you know what jism means? <laughs> yes, it means spin. <laughs> so, so, so now, now. We, we do another segment, we come back to commercial, and Frank goes, all right, clamp it, in my office, right after the show. At, upon hearing this, McCord and I, we get off the air and we run like hell for Frank's office to get a front row seat Make sure we get a front for, for what's, what's gonna happen next. So, so we're sitting in there, and, and he, Frank goes, what are you guys doing here? He goes, well, you just, no, you just wanna say hi? <laughs> so, so, so clamp it comes in, and, and, and Frank explains to him exactly. <laughs> one of the great meetings of all time. <laughs> he, is, he explains to him what jism means. And so now, so now Remember the next he, 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 says, he says, he said, it is a bodily fluid, Bobby. And I want you to look it up. It's a bodily fluid. You cannot say that on national television. 
So Clampett walks away with his tails in his leg. And this guy I oh, <laughs> couldn't, <laughs> couldn't possibly remain silent. So he goes, Frank, can we say bodily fluids? No, no, hold it, hold Frank. it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Frank did an interview that Monday with, with uh, what's the guy's name from USA? Um, good guy that always wrote the TV stuff. Anyway, oh, Rudy Marsky. Yes, Rudy Marsky, very good. <laughs> yeah. And he writes, Frank is quoting this article. Uh, Bobby Clampett on the air said, Jism, quote, yeah. okay, and uh, another term for bodily fluid and everything, and Frank says, you're gonna do that. So, that was in the paper. The next, <coughs> I'm sitting there, and I'm on the 16th hole. And I'm on the 16th hole to Kemper, and I'm just waiting for somebody to hit a shot in there to spin it on Saturday, okay? And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I go, oh, look at the bodily fluid on that. I got annihilated by Frank. <laughs> and now we go, we had to throw it to Ben Wright on seven. <laughs> ben couldn't talk. He, he was, was laughing. laughing so he was hard. laughing so hard. He could not talk. And Frank then had to throw it, and he called a commercial, and he just screamed at us. And he says, you get in here. You get in here right now. As soon as this telecast is done, so it's the same thing. Now I'm getting in trouble. So we go in, and we're all sitting there, and Frank is ripping me. I mean, just ripping me. You can't say it. And the whole time, I had that article, and I folded it up and put right. it in my pocket. And I waited, and I waited until he was done. There's a pregnant pause, and I went, and I opened it up, and I put it in front of him. I said, well, you said that on a national newspaper. Why can't I use it on a national telecast? I'll never forget that. <laughs> and he goes, out of here. Get out of here right now. Get out of here. And I ran out, and we got laughing so hard at that. That was the fun times where you used so, to so, just screw with people. <laughs> What we're getting to now is we're, we're slowly coming to a meeting of the minds <coughs> or meeting That's of the mind <laughs> um, on, on what it takes to, to improve the golf telecast and have fun. Have some fun. Right now, all we got, I'm not going to pass judgment on any individual. I, I, I don't want to do that. But we got a bunch of ex tour players who are trying to be cheerleaders for other tour players. They're trying to be cheerleaders for the PGA Tour. Went to school with them. They, 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 they're, not, they're not offering any insight. They're not offering any humor. They're not offering any, anything that you can't see on, on your TV. So if they're not going to offer that, then why have so many announcers? Yeah, and it, it was like Frank always said. He told us, you, you, you hire guys that are all different. Yeah. And let them come in the middle to do something. So you don't want a bunch of idiots <laughs> acting like comedians all of them you got to have a smart guy here and a guy doing the golf swings here and you got to do that you got and then let him get in the middle you don't have everybody doing the same thing all right we'll, 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 we'll wrap it up with this i remember my first meeting with frank and, and, and i'm in his office and he goes all right he goes the camera can always tell a lie be truthful be yourself he says do not try to be funny you're not funny. I'm, I'm going, well, I, I'm kind of funny. <laughs> no, you're no, not. No, you're not funny. You're not funny. He goes, you're smart. I hired you for smart. I got McCord and Wright for funny. That's, I got funny covered. So don't be funny. Just, and I, I remember walking out of there thinking, well, oh, shit. I, I want to be funny. I want to, you know, I, I, thought, I thought I could be, be funny. And, 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 and this is the first person in the entire world that told me I'm not funny. <laughs> <laughs> and he's my boss. What do I do? You're not funny. That's so what he, he was 110% right, yeah, yeah. but he put together an ensemble of different voices and different viewpoints. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the show, you, you may not have liked what I said or what you said, or, you know, but you liked something about the show. Yeah. And it was different. And, and, it was different. Yeah. and, and so therefore, uh, it, it was productive and, and people enjoyed it. But today it's the same old blah, blah, blah. That's three feet past the hole. Uh, the shot, shot link says he's got a 42% yeah. probability of making this putt, but it's downhill and it's the grains to the left and the sun's to the right. And it's so boring, these and statistics. You, you have to, and again, you, so boring. when you're doing this as, as an announcer, you have to read the graphics. You can't let the graphics sit there in what they call the lower third. So you got your picture. Why? The graphics. Why? Why? Why exactly. do you have to read it? it, it Remember, we were told read I, the graphics. Read the graphics. Why do you have to read it if it's already there? I understand. 100%. That's like telling me what's already on the TV. That's when I knew we were dead because. <laughs> so here's how it works. 
you got the guys at 18. You, so you, you got Nance in our area, you had Nance and Venturi. They were at 18. They would throw it to me. They'd see the shot. They'd throw it to me at 16. I would then say something about the shot or call in Peter or David. Faraday was on the ground. Uh, Peter, what, uh, what, what do you think? Why did you pull that shot? No, Peter's a teacher. That's what we're going to look for these guys to have some kind of flaw and it comes up and he's going to explain. In the meantime, I got a graphic comes up and now while I'm, Peter's trying to answer my question, I'm trying to, now I'm getting, I got to read the graphic and now they said, throw it to 14, we got another ball in the air. So all this stuff <laughs> takes, it, it takes the, the literal heart out of the, the analysis of trying to set up what these guys are doing between you and me or, or 30 yeah. uh, are you and a hole announcer and you start throwing this other stuff in it's really hard because golf is a slow sport but it's really fast in the in the in the process because there are literally 30 to 40 balls in the air at the same time especially when the leaderboard gets all jammed so this thing goes in a hurry and we have to do all this stuff we would lose the whole perspective we I, used to, I, used to, I used to tell people my my life existed in six second yeah. increments. Yeah. That was it. And I, how do you how do you get in and out in six seconds and say something of, a, of, yeah. of value, yeah. right? It's, it's, it's hard. It's virtually impossible. It's hard. That's why my hope in this whole thing, to, to put a button on this, my, my hope in this whole thing was the Live Golf telecast simply because money wasn't going to be an issue. Mm -hmm. At least in my mind, it wasn't an issue. They're spending so many millions of dollars, right? They had the wherewithal to do it commercial free, to do it with, with Shot Tracer, to do it correctly. And instead, they, they spent all their money on announcers, and, and the production is, is, is regurgitated 1992 golf television. They haven't done anything different. Now, if you're going to have a shotgun start, which is different, then you can't, carry, you can't cover it like it's a regular event with tee times. Mm -hmm. You got to do it different. Shake it up. How you do want to do that? It's got to do with the money you have, right? Take the Cameras on on every hole. Peter talking to my iPhone here. I'm yeah, <laughs> you got to do something that works. So, so they, they that have works. they have not done anything. They've been a huge disappointment to me in terms of elevating TV golf coverage around the world uh, in general. Well, that wraps up that segment. And uh, Gary and I have really enjoyed doing these things for you. We're having a blast. I hope you're enjoying them as well. Uh, thanks for, for tuning in. M remember to click and subscribe. That really helps us out a lot. And as well, leave comments. Hopefully nice ones, but whatever you want to say, say it. And if you have comments that you would like to have us cover this subject or that subject in future episodes, let us know. I'll run some more X polls to, to figure out where the state of golf is and what's going on as the year unfolds. But right now, we're having fun doing this. Uh, Costas and McCord off their rockers. Thanks for staying tuned and watching. We want to thank you again for watching Costas and McCord off their rockers. Hope you enjoyed this episode, our new segment, Believe It or Not. A lot of great information from Peter and Gary. And, and thanks again for subscribing, liking, commenting below if you have any questions or want to hear us talk about anything different. And remember to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss an episode of Costas and McCord off their rockers. Thanks again to our great sponsors, Foresight Sports and their incredible launch monitors and simulators, Bono's Barbecue and their great barbecue sauces and meats, and of course, Lab Golf and the Lab Golf Putter and their cutting edge putters at Lab Golf. Go to labgolf.com for more. We'll be back with another episode very soon, right here on Costas and McCord Off Their Rockers. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you real soon.